What's up, everybody? It's Big Shep here, True Sports Cards and Collectibles in Rockland, California. And lucky, we are lucky enough today to have an NBA legend, an NBA Hall, a professional basketball Hall of Famer, and top 50 NBA of all time, Mr. Rick Barry. Rick, thanks for hanging out with us today. No problem. What's up? It's been a great, great experience. Uh, I listened to you for a long time when you did the radio show. I was going to Chico State. I listened to you all the time. And uh, I loved uh, how you were unvarnished in your show. And I really appreciated uh, what you provided to the sports fans back in the day. So thank you very much. Well, yeah, I was happy to do it, although they weren't ready for honesty back in those days. No. And so uh, I got in trouble for being honest. You know, I said, hey, I'm not a shill. I mean, I'm going to tell you the freaking truth. And it's their problem. I feel like Jack Nicholson and the movie a few good men right yep. and the courtroom scene with tom cruise you can't handle the truth so yeah. that's it was, the problem it was great uh on top of being an uh, amazing nba player and show host you've also uh you had some sons that played in the nba and in college and did quite well my favorite scooter played at ku i'm a huge ku guy that's the team i remember first watching so uh, that's pretty awesome john he played here in sacramento and was part of the bench mob but I have a question for you. If you were going to pick one of your kids to play as your partner in a two-on-two -two versus two of the others, who would you pick? Actually, they all could play. I mean, I mean, every one of my boys had a great natural feel for the game. Um, I don't think I think Brent probably had the most flair of anybody. Uh, I don't think he was used as efficiently and as effectively as he should have been. Uh, the great story about him is I always told people, and I never really meddled and stuff, but I told Tim Floyd when my son was with Chicago, and I said, Tim, have you ever thought of taking Brent and letting him run point guard? You don't have a point guard. And they never paid any attention to me and didn't, didn't do it. And then he winds up in Seattle when Gary Payton got traded. For whatever reason, Nate McMillan started him at point guard. I forget it was either 16 or 18 assists he had in the first game he ever started the point guard. Brent would have been an amazing point guard if a coach had ever given him a chance to do that. And I see, you see that happen all the time in basketball. Is, and, and it's all sports. Coaches don't recognize somebody's talent and put him in a position to just take advantage of the skills that they have. And Brent's a perfect example. My other son, Canyon's another one. My son, Canyon, is kind of a little bit like Brent, doesn't have the flair, but he can create, get to the basket, has no weaknesses, but he's never really been given the chance to do it. The only time he did, he was over in China for a month and he played and he got the ball in his hands. He averaged 30 points a game, shooting 60, 40, 90. And, 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 but he just doesn't get the chance. He's never had the chance over here. And so he's languishing in the G League, playing for the Minnesota Timberwolves G League team. But uh, his stats are better than some of the two-way guys that they have. And it's just a shame because I hate to see talent wasted. And everybody thinks, oh, yeah, well, that's a father talking about his son. No, no. If you know me, I'm honest. Yep. If my son couldn't play, say, hey, my son isn't worth a shit, so don't even bother playing with him. But my son can play. And it's a, it's a major waste of talent. And that happens a lot in basketball. And uh, But they're all great, you know, good kids. I mean, they have five kids, all one, all Division One college scholarship players. All of them played professional basketball. Uh, you know, I kind of pinched myself. I was hoping I'd have one that'd be good enough to play basketball, but I've got five of them that all yeah, have played, and, awesome. all, and they're all good people. That's the most important thing. They, they haven't done anything to screw up their lives, and they're good people, and, and we're really good, outstanding basketball players. That's, that's awesome. I, I love hearing that, and I knew I'd get the truth there. Um, so another question, best shooter in Warriors history. You're on the list. No, I'm not even, Steph, I, I'm not anywhere close, close on the list. I'm, there's, I wasn't a great shooter. I was a great scorer. Score. Big okay. difference between the two. Yeah. Uh, you know, I hear these guys on TV, uh, especially former players, and they say, he's a lockdown defender. I go, well, maybe somebody locked you down, but I never read of a guy that locked me down. You can't lock down a scorer. You can lock down a shooter. For these guys to make those statements, they don't know what the hell they're talking about. There's no such thing as a lockdown defender against a score. I have too many ways to beat you. There's no way. You know, people say, oh, you scored you know, all those points. I said, listen, to score 20 points in a basketball game is not very difficult. And you just break it down. You play on a team that runs. So if you run the floor and you're smart, you're going to get, I'm going to be very conservative. I'm going to give myself two layups. Only two in the whole game. That's four points. Yep. If I work hard, I get one offensive rebound put back. I've got six, right? I drove like crazy, got to the line. I used to shoot over 10 free throws a game early in my career. So let's be conservative there. Just give me six. So I'm at 12, right? Yep. Okay. I didn't have the three-point shot. I only have to make four shots to get 20. How difficult is that? If I take 10 yeah. shots and only shoot 40%, I'm at 20. How the hell hard is it to score 20 points in a game if you know what you're doing? <laughs> it's, it's not, you know, maybe you can come help out the Sacramento Kings a little bit, give them some advice. Uh, what is the most unique piece of memorabilia you've ever signed or been offered to sign? Uh, I don't know. Interesting question. Nobody's ever asked me that. Uh, 
I probably the most unique thing, I'm actually signing it right now, Jeff Hamilton, who made up jackets for the top 50 and for the top 75 of the 75th anniversary team, these beautiful leather jackets out of LA. I'm actually signing one of those jackets that he made up of mine because it was too big, so he's making me another one. And so I'm actually gonna sign that. That'll be probably a pretty cool piece to yeah. have. It'd be a one of a kind for yeah, sure. That's awesome. Yeah. Do you have anything that you kept from your career that you look back on that you hold on to memorabilia or any? Well, crazy enough, I usually wear my rings when I come to events like this, but it's so old, I don't want to wear it out too much, and I forgot to bring it. So that, that's the only ring I ever wear is, is my uh, championship ring. You don't play for under individual honors. Well, you shouldn't be anyway. You play for championships. And so that's the most rewarding championship that I've ever been on in team. It was very special for me. And uh, I was the first time I ever was captain of the team. And I took that responsibility very seriously, and I thought I did a good job with that. In fact, keep an eye out because we finally, after almost 50 freaking years later, the documentary is going to be done of our championship team. I mean, it's just ludicrous that that hasn't been done before. It's the most, it's the most incredible accomplishment by the four major sports in championship history. Nobody was as big an underdog as we were. We didn't even pick to be a playoff team that year. And not only do we get to the playoffs, we win our conference, then we're supposed to be the biggest mismatch in the history of NBA Finals, and we're gonna get swept. Well, they got it right about the sweep, but it was us sweeping the bullets. And so we're finally gonna do a documentary about that, and I'm happy for that because it's a story that needs to be told because basketball is a team sport, and you don't win by yourself. And everybody gives me the credit. No, the most important person on that team was Clifford Ray. And, and it'll all come out in the story. This is why I want to make sure I was trying to do it myself, but Charles Dudley, the hopper, got involved and started doing something. And I said, Charles, I just want to know what we're trying to do here. And I said, because I wanted to do this and be, I wanted to tell the story of this team that helped me become a champion and give credit to my teammates who didn't get the credit they deserve. I got credit because I have MVP, but my teammates didn't get the credit they deserved. There was a team that epitomized what basketball was all about selfishness, doing what you had to do, being together. It was an incredible accomplishment. So I'm really looking forward to seeing what they do with this documentary. Well, I, I can't either. I love that stuff. Learn, love learning about the game. And I appreciate you spending some time with us today. Thank you. It was a great experience. Uh, again, awesome autograph. Like the other guys, we had Raleigh, Horace in here. Perfect all the way through. Amazing. Well, tell great them time. everywhere we are. Yeah. True. True. Cards. <laughs> and collectibles. collectibles. With... Yep. Imran, Pilati. <laughs> That's right, Mr. Imran Pilati. Well, actually, yeah. we're actually partnering up and doing some stuff together. Oh. So it's great to see. It's a beautiful, uh, beautiful store and, and certainly wish you guys well. And uh, we've got a few things that we're going to do together that'll be some unique pieces, I think, that we'll be able to bring into the store oh, that people have a chance it. to get. Yeah, well, thank you very much. I appreciate it.